All right. So as we look at 6.7, absolute value equations. Remember an absolute value, okay? The graph is in the shape of a V. We've talked about that before. Anytime you have an absolute value equation, the graph is in the shape of a V. Now, up until now, all of your absolute value equations that we've had, John, have been very simple. They've been vertical, up and down on the X and Y axis for the most part, or sometimes left and right. Today I'm going to show you some basic parameters so you can very quickly assess without having to make a table like we did in the past. Remember last time we made a table and we kept on plugging in points until we found out where the check mark was and then that showed us where the V is. That still works. So if you're struggling or you can't remember which way it goes, plug in points and that will help you to see which way it goes. Question, Brittany? No, my chair is skipping 6.6. Yeah, we're skipping 6.6, .6, jumping to 6.7. So, we're going to kind of just talk through these. These are kind of some general ideas. It says when you add or subtract something outside an absolute value, the graph shifts up and down. In other words, you put a number plus or minus out here. When you add or subtract a number inside the absolute value on the inside, it's going to shift left and right. And it's in a unique way. And then if there's a negative sign in front of it, it flips upside down. So we're going to graph a lot of absolute values today, but they're all going to come back to what we call our parent function. And the parent function is centered right here at the origin, at 0, 0, and it's up at 1, 1 as a slope and 1, negative 1 on your other side. So, first idea, really straightforward. Down here at the bottom, I've drawn three dotted lines. The fact that it's a dotted line, TJ, means it's not really a part of the graph. It just helps us to shape the graph. It's kind of like the dotted lines in the middle of the road, okay? They're there to guide you and keep you on the basic lane where you are, but they're not really, you know, a, a dotted line in the road means you can't cross it, okay? So it's not really a rigid line. So in this way, we have this dotted line, and that is called our parent function. So what we do, since it says it's adding three, this is a shift up <coughs> by three. So we're going to take each of our points and we're going to go up three. So one, two, three, put a dot. One, two, three, put a dot. One, two, three, put a dot. Shift that one up three and that one up three. And that is your real function shifted up by three. So the real function is what's in blue. The dotted one is just a guideline. It's not really the answer. So if you're really looking for the answer, you would erase the dotted one and just have that solid blue line. Why did it shift up by three? Because it was a plus three on the outside. Now on each one of these, we're gonna check one point just to make sure that we're correct. So let's check one point here. I'm gonna plug in the point two. So let's check x equals two. Plug in two, absolute value of two is, obviously two, two plus three is five. So is this the point two five? If it is, you, do, you have a pretty good chance that it does check. So it's always a good idea to check at least one point when we're doing shifts. Once again, when it's a plus or a minus outside, it's just a shift up or down. So this one has the absolute value of x minus 2. So that's going to be a shift down 2. So take each of your values and go down two dots. Should end up something like that. Draw your line. An absolute value has to be a V. Make sure your V follows the path of the other one. Make sure it doesn't like cross over it. It should be an exact replica, just slid down. Imagine you're cutting and pasting. You pick it up, you select it, and you slide it down two units. Now let's check a point. I'm going to try negative 3. It doesn't have to be negative or positive. Let's try x equals negative 3. So what's the absolute value of negative 3 minus 2? Absolute value of negative 3? 3 minus 2? 1. So at negative 3, is it positive 1? It is. So there's our check. A check is a crucial piece to making sure that we did the right slide. If 
it doesn't work out, obviously that's a good indication that you made some kind of small mistake. All right, so our third one, which way does it shift, up or down? Okay, it shifts up one unit. So shift up one unit. And here we go. Let's try a point. I'm going to pick negative 4. Let's try x equals negative 4. Plug it in. y equals the absolute value of negative 4 plus 1. What should y be equal to? Absolute value of 4 is just 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So negative 4, 5, and that is check. Okay, so each of these checked in that capacity. Why bother with the